<laughs> Sam Carter has asked you, were there any, uh, excuse me, were there ever any talks between Shane and WWE after WCW was purchased? If not, was Shane ever even interested in going back to WWE in 2001? Shane would have been an incredible character during the invasion angle instead of the mid-tier jobbers we ended up getting. Well, th- there were th- simultaneous things going on at that time. Great question, Sam. Uh, first of all, we were still being paid by WCW because our contracts ran through uh, I think 2003 or something like that. And you had Maybe a Turner contract, didn't you? You weren't a WCW yes. contract, you were on Turner. Yeah. Correct. And so I would have had to give that up, which was a pretty good chunk of money. But I had said whenever I left there in 95, uh, and, and we talked about this previously off camera, James, about being people of principle. Uh, you know, you, you, you can say you're a person of principle. And then when the wind blows the other way, you go, well, it's okay. I'm just doing this one time. And you're, you're, you're nothing more than paid for hire. Um, uh, and, and I've tried wrongly or rightly to live my life by principle and I've failed at times. And, but it's not because for, you know, I've just ignored it or just said to hell with it. Um, so I said, whenever I left there in 95, uh, he'll never get me again. You know, got me once on the pay stuff. You know, we've talked about that previously. Uh, he won't get me twice. And there's been multiple times that I was contacted, most notably when they relaunched ECW. Uh, Tommy Dreamer called me and said they had just walked out of the meeting and Vince wanted me to be the first uh, to be signed up. And Tommy and I talked four days in a row on the phone, the last time for about eight hours. I was living in Florida at the time, and I had actually left my house, talked on the phone, went down to uh, the T- uh, TGI Fridays or Applebee's or something, whatever it was there. And uh, sat there and ate and drank and talked to Tommy the whole time. And I kept telling him over and over again, please tell Vince. I said, thank you for thinking of me. Uh, and uh, but I, I'm going to pass. Just not interested. And, uh, you know, because if I'd go back and get it again, then I'd have nobody to blame but myself. And uh, quite honestly, the fans have listened to me long enough to know that I just have a fundamental difference in the approach to the business than, than Vince McMahon does. It's his ballywick. He can do what he, what he wants with it. But for me to again go in there and say, okay, well, I'm going to abandon my principles and I'm going to go ahead and put myself, prone myself again to possibly getting screwed on money again. Uh, then I got nobody to blame but myself. Been there, done that. And in, in my uh, career, I'd never wanted to repeat. I, you know, so you'll see this, like there's a, at certain points of my career, you can see a de- Shane Douglas developing, growing a, a, as a character. Uh, and I wanted to, I'd always said I wanted to learn all the aspects of, of my business before I left. I wanted to know why the director shot from that camera instead of this camera. Why why did the promoter or the booker put this person over instead of that person? Why did they do this spot in that location? Uh, that's the stuff that interested me and kept me from being bored just watching wrestling matches every night, although I could watch great wrestling matches every night. Uh, so for me, it was a, it was more based on principle. And there were three other times, four times altogether, that the WWF had called me, WWE had called me. Uh, and I just really had no auspice to go up. And when I say that my six months there in 95 was the worst of my career, uh, I mean that. I mean, it was, uh, I'd always loved wrestling. I never felt like I'd gone to work a day in my life, except those six months. That was a trudge of a job. Uh, you know, it's, it might sound silly to, to the fans out there. Shane Douglas and Troy Martin are two different people. Thank God. Um, and I, I'm comfortable being Troy Martin, but I like playing Shane Douglas for that 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 minutes a night that I get to play him. But to stay in that character, which is what I would have to do to keep from going off uh, at certain people, was mentally draining. I would come home off the road from them and felt like I had just been put through the ringer three times because I had to maintain that character, that wall as the franchise, so I wouldn't grab somebody by their throat and it was exhausting and i i don't want to experience that again uh you know there's no ill will towards vince or anybody that's long since gone uh me and most of the click have put the heat well behind us uh you know and i i'm trying to teach my boy some things now about that type of thing like you know just better way to live your life 
Uh, but I, I couldn't prone myself to Vince again because I've been there, done that. Don't don't agree with his philosophy on the business. Uh, certain I wouldn't like what he would be doing with my character. So I'd have nobody to blame. And again, based on principle, like we'd said earlier, uh, off camera, James, like if somebody came and said, okay, but you, you know, would you murder somebody for a million bucks? No. Uh, would you rob a bank for a hundred thousand? No, no, it's because then I'm, I'm nothing more than a prostitute at that point. If you're ever going to pay me the highest dollar, I'll just go do what you want me to do. And, uh, and I'm quite comfortable with this. I've reached the stage of my life where I know who I am, uh, and I'm comfortable with that. I'm well aware of the warts and, uh, warts and all, and, and how badly my farts stink. Um, and, and I'm fine with that. Uh, because ultimately, I believe that when you put your head on a pillow at night, like you got to be comfortable with with who who that person is, and you get up every morning, you look yourself in the mirror before you shave, and who do you? I, I ask my boys this: you get to decide who's staring back at you. Do you respect that guy? Do you think that guy's a schmuck? And I'm comfortable with my skin with where I am right now. So uh, no ill will towards them. I wish them the best of luck in anything they do. Uh, but I had never had a desire to go back and won't go back. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to bring up. Um... In 1999, and we've told this story on this podcast, I believe, if not the other channel, uh, both of these, uh, you, I don't know if WWF made an overture to you or the other way around, but I think they offered you what you called an insultingly low offer, like 135 or something like that, compared to WCW, yeah. so you went WCW. It was also the time that we have told on the other channel, WSI, where there was a chance you would have gone to the WWF in early 2000 with Benoit, Malenko, Saturn, uh, Guerrero. Um so uh, in the early 2000 thing, was there no chance of you ever thinking of going to the WWF or would you have actually considered going in 2000? Yeah, was considering it, but was considering it only as the block. I knew that Vince, I was smart enough to understand that Vince definitely wanted Ben Juan. He definitely wanted Guerrero. He had real no interest in, in Dean. He had real no interest in Perry. He had no real interest for sure in me, uh, but he would have taken as the block. And as we've seen, you know, with the click or, you know, those certain groups that would stick together, you'd have some, some leverage to it. Uh, uh, but I, I knew that that was not going to be, ever be the real deal. So I think my agreeing to it was just a counterbalance against WCW. Uh, I didn't know I was taking at face value, what Dean and Chris and Perry were telling me, uh, which later turned out not to be the case. But ultimately, there's a reason why I didn't sign my release from WCW, even though I was threatened and withheld pay for, you know, uh, they, they had violated the contract for quite a while. Um, uh, there was a, a reason why ultimately I didn't was because I didn't want to go. I, when I had signed my contract with WCW, that was in complete good faith. I, th I, I knew that them, Eric wanted to bring me and Ric Flair to, to television, that that could have really catapulted could have been the engine that drove WCW back up uh, because the fans were well aware of the heat between us and uh, uh, that it was legit. And that I think would have tuned up, it would have given a new dimension of realism to wrestling that was badly needed at that time. Uh, so like the, to me, I think it was always more exploratory stage and to work off as a counterbalance to WCW. I never really envisioned myself going back to WWF only because I couldn't see myself back in that system. I knew that I couldn't thrive in that system. Uh, you know, when I went there in 95 and I was told to speak in a monotone voice and never raise my voice or lower my voice and do that. Uh, oh, there's zero money in that. That's a, for me, that's a channel flip. And, uh, you know, and the reasoning that I was told. So, you know, I, I knew that Vince, when he, especially with the refigured ECW, their ECW 2, um, I knew because when I was there in 95 that Vince had zero respect for ECW. Vince McMahon had never said those three letters to me. It was always the bingo hall company, the small pond, the minor league, the blood and guts company, euphemisms like that. But he never one time said to me, hey, an ECW that franchise carried, that was pretty good stuff. Uh, you know, so I knew in my bones that he was not doing this for any altruistic reason and certainly wasn't doing it to, to shine a spotlight on ECW. I think in, in my estimation, it was at the time, if you remember uh, the, the fans would go crazy when they saw something that looked halfway legitimate in the ring, what would they chant? ECW, ECW, right? And so you could tell, you'd watch it at home and you'd hear, you see the fans pumping their fists three times and you'd hear. 
And, you, and it, it, the, the visual didn't go with what you were hearing. I think Vince did that intentionally to put out such a bad version of ECW, him thinking that the fans will stop chanting ECW because it's going to be so bad of a version. And instead what it did was it grew the legend of the real ECW. So uh, no, it's, I, I don't believe that it was legit. Uh, at least on my part, it was more counterbalance to get WCW off my back.